Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, August 17th, 2012. We begin with a story from the world of material science, particularly as it applies to the environment. Using a supercomputer, a group from Haverford College have designed a theoretical material for filtering carbon dioxide. As you hopefully know, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, meaning it absorbs heat from the sun. Humans are unfortunately producing a lot of carbon dioxide and causing global climate change. Now, on Brainstorm, we talk a lot about advances in solar, hydrogen, and other alternate energy technologies that wouldn't emit CO2. While those energy sources are getting better, the fact remains that fossil fuels like coal and oil wouldn't stop being used as soon as those other technologies could meet our needs. So while the transition to clean energy will be slow, there are still ideas for reducing emissions, which is where this material comes in. Again, it's only been designed with a supercomputer. Part of the group is still working on how to actually synthesize the material. It would be a thin polymer that essentially acts as a molecular filter, being roughly 100 times more permeable to carbon dioxide than nitrogen and other gases. This is possible because it contains holes that are just the right size for CO2 molecules to fit through given the correct orientation. Getting this correct orientation isn't guaranteed, but the polymer is also designed to absorb CO2 on its surface, giving the molecules multiple opportunities to pass through the material. If successful, this could be incorporated into systems that produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct and safely sequester the greenhouse gas. Next, we have an update from the world of technology, particularly technology related to the very important issue of water desalination, developed by researchers at Stanford University and Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Probably the most common method of turning salt water into fresh water is reverse osmosis, but another method called capacitive desalination may have advantages over it, such as efficiency. Generally, capacitive desalination systems involve salty water flowing between two porous electrodes, the sodium and chlorine ions getting absorbed into these micropores when voltage is passed through the electrodes. This system, unsurprisingly called flow between CD, has several limitations, however, such as the multiple charging and desalination cycles required to make even mildly salty water usable. This is where a different system comes in, called flow-through CD, in which salt water passes directly through the electrodes. To make this system as efficient as possible, the research made the electrodes from a special carbon aerogel with both micro and nanoscale pores. Water can pass with relatively little resistance through the microscale pores, and the nanoscale ones create a lot of surface area for the salt ions to get attached to. Theoretical models showed increased performance, but the researchers verified this by actually building a flow-through system and testing it. As suspected, it could collect salt four to ten times faster than flow between CD, and absorbed more for every charge cycle. It's definitely better than flow between, but improvements could still be made to the system to decrease the cycle length and further improve energy efficiency. It could even outperform reverse osmosis technology for potable desalination systems, as RO is less efficient the smaller the scale. Either way, capacitive desalination could be a main method for purifying brackish water, which isn't as salty as the ocean, but still a major potential source of potable water. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.